another initial value problem. This one, uh, similar to the last one, dy over dx equals x minus 1 cubed. And the initial condition is y of 0 equals 2. So um, with initial value problems, we take the integral of this function first. So the integral of x minus 1 to the 3 dx. Um, we're going to use chain rule, deal with the outside of this function first and then the inside. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and say, we'll keep this, x minus 1. We add 1 to the exponent. So 3 plus 1 is 4. And then we divide the coefficient, which is a 1, implied right here, by the new exponent. So we're going to have 1 fourth out in front here, um, the, the coefficient divided by the new exponent. So 1 fourth. And then um, when we're taking the integral in this way using chain rule, we do the outside, which we did the, the exponent here and the coefficient. But then we have to deal with the inside here um, and divide this whole thing by the derivative of the inside. So the way that we do that is take the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of x minus 1 is simply 1, um, which comes from the x here, and this 1 goes away because it's a constant. So the derivative of the inside being 1, we have to divide this entire function by 1, but of course that has no effect on the function. We don't have to divide the whole thing by 1, we get the same thing. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that off. So this is, this is now the integral, and then of course, as always, we add c um, to account for the constant. So now that we've gotten the integral, um, we go ahead and apply the initial condition. So, and remember, this always equals y um, whenever we have initial value problems. And the, the reason, the way you can remember that is because when you go ahead and apply the initial condition, you're going to plug this in for x and this in for y, um, you have no, without this here, you have no y's in this problem. So you may be wondering, where do I plug in the 2? I, I don't have a place to put it here. It's because it always equals y. So you're going to go ahead and say 2 equals, because you're plugging in the 2 for the y, and then um, you plug in 0 for x here, and, uh, and, and that leaves you with c, so you can solve for c. So we plug in 2 for y, and then we say equals 1 fourth times... Um, and we're plugging in 0 for x, so 0 minus 1 to the 4th plus c. Okay, so, so now that we have this, we can simplify and solve for c. So we'll have 2 equals 1 fourth, 0 minus 1 is negative 1 to the 4th plus c, and negative 1 to the 4th um, is 1. So we'll have 2 equals 1 fourth, um, that 1 goes away, it's, you know, we multiply 1 fourth times 1, we get 1 fourth plus c, so then we get c equals, we subtract 1 fourth from both sides, um, and it cancels here, and then we subtract 1 fourth, so uh, we'll get c equals 1 and 3 quarters, which is the same thing as 7 fourths. Um, so we've solved for c. And then the last thing we have to do is plug c back into, um, into our function that we got after we integrated. So we have y equals, that stays the same, all we're doing is plugging back in for c. y equals 1 fourth, I'm taking this straight from here, um, 1 fourth x minus 1 to the 4 plus 7 fourths. Um, and that's the final answer.